Radio MD. RadioMD.com. This is Her Radio, starring acclaimed entrepreneur and women's advocate, Michelle King Robeson, and leading women's health expert, the doc who walks the talk, Dr. Pam Peek, on Radio MD. Michelle, can you be happy and burned out at the same time? Uh, trick question, no. trick question. Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I live both lives, right? I'm oh, yeah, happy man. and I'm burned out. There, there you go. So we're going to talk about even though you're happy, can you still be burned out? Our guest is Dr. Scott Beeson, and he is fabulous, um, very prolific, the author of The Working Dad Survival Guide, How to Succeed at Work and at Home. He's a professor of management at Fairleigh Dickinson University. And uh, Scott, we're so happy to have you on her radio. Welcome aboard. So happy to be here. All right. So talk to us. Why is, how did you come up with this whole concept of, you know, how you could be happy, but whoops, burnt out at the same time? Well, this is something that I've noticed quite a bit. I mean, I think we all feel this in our lives. If we care about our careers, right, we work probably more than full-time hours. And Mm -hmm. so many of us are also busy as parents or in other aspects of our lives. So, you know, it's easy to feel overwhelmed and burned out, right? Um, So I came across a, a survey that really just demonstrated this, that the headline was that most people are happy at work. It was a survey of office workers. And I think something like 86% of office workers reported they were at least somewhat happy at work. But then also over half of them said they felt like they worked far too many hours and they felt kind of chronically burned out. And that's kind of paradoxical, right? Um, so I thought that was a great uh, thing to write about for um, the Harvard Business Review. Is, and that's uh, um, kind of the, the article that, that we're talking about today. So that's how I... I decided to talk about chronic overwork, which has been a theme in my in my writing as well. So talk, let's, let's talk about chronic overwork. So what can employers do to reduce that chronic overwork and improve their workplace health, right? What, what are the things right. that, that they can do? Well, uh, first off, I, I think we need to acknowledge that occasional overwork is probably, you know, uh, everyone I think understands that that's okay. That's kind of part of the deal of being a, a career professional. But when it gets to be chronic, it's like being an athlete that always has to be, you know, lifting weights and lifting weights and never stops. Uh, eventually, right. you burn out and you, you get hurt. And that happens in workplaces, too. If people are working too many hours all the time, they lose their productivity, they burn out, they're, they're likely to turn over. So there's a few things em- employers can do and managers can do. And one is, you know, to, to rethink your time demand, number one. Um, and, and in many organizations, uh, we don't do a good job of measuring performance, so we measure like time at the office or time at your desk, um, and that's a terrible way to to really evaluate whether somebody's being productive or not, right? So we oh, need yeah. to reduce the emphasis of time and increase the emphasis on performance. Um, so that would be one thing. The second is also to allow people more flexibility in their scheduling and how they get work done, especially for office jobs or white collar jobs. Probably a third of the work that most white-collar professionals do can be done somewhere other than the office and at some time other than 9 to 5. And if we give people flexibility to work around uh, their own needs or their their need for downtime, uh, we're going to get more productivity out of them. I I love it. And I completely, yeah, Michelle and I are like all over that. All right. Talk to us, Scott. What's the difference in experience for a woman versus a man in this whole burnout thing? Well, I think, you know, obviously both men and women experience uh, burnout at work and, um, and in going between work and their family lives. Um, I wrote specifically the Working Dad Survival Guide because I had not seen any advice or encouragement out there for working dads dealing with this issue. Um, but I think most of the lessons are pretty much the same. I will say that in Some macho kind of workplaces, you know, in finance, consulting, you know, uh, places in law, um, there might be additional pressures for men to kind of appear to always be like all in for work uh, because it's assumed that they are the providers and therefore their number one, two, and three job is to work themselves um, as opposed to having a fuller life that, that may, might involve being a more involved hands-on dad and needing time to do that. 
So I think things are, are similar in most ways, but there might be a few additional pressures for men um, to be seen as manly in the workplace. And sometimes that cuts them off from having a balanced life. Well, I yeah. think that, you know, a woman's experience, and Michelle, let's, let's have a conversation here. I think a woman's experience, she just keeps it to herself. And I think most of the, uh, you know, the pain that happens is they just implode, become self-destructive when they get home, take it out on, you know, whatever. Take it out on themselves especially. I, I think the experience is, is um, a different one because of the way women deal with things emotionally. What do you think, well, Michelle? Yeah, it's the silent suffering piece, right? So we and we're supposed to be multitasking. So we're supposed to be working, taking care of the family, taking care of, you know, strangers, taking care of everybody instead and not taking care of ourselves. Yeah, so absolutely. we're we're taxed with all of that. And yeah, I think for and- men, I agree with you what you're saying that men view this as it's a, their full-time job, full-time job, you know, everything revolves around their work. And actually, I think part of their identity or a lot of their identity is tied into their work. Um, and that, that's different for us as women. Uh, yeah, there's so much pressure on women um, to be like these perfect parents and perfect mothers, as if anyone could possibly be. Um, you know, it's very unrealistic pressure. We and try. When, <laughs> when, and when workplaces <laughs> and is. others expect that men are really for the workplace and are not expected to share in caring and running a household, then everything invariably falls to women, which is unbelievably unfair and holds them back in their careers and puts too much pressure on them. It'd be much better if we had kind of more shared care approaches and more gender equity, both at work and at home. I like the shared care philosophy because I think it would stop divorces as well. Yeah, I agree. I think there's a lot to be said about both both parents sharing the responsibility. But let's talk about how is it possible to still be happy at your job if you're burned out? Well, I think most um, the modern workplace can be very fulfilling in many ways, right? People do interesting work, and they feel like they're developing, and they have pride in what they do, and they feel very respected in the workplace. It's just like way too much of a good thing, I, I think, is what we're experiencing. And um, Well, you know, that brings, that brings us to another thing, though. I personally feel as a physician that um, many people, uh, maybe most of them, are actually dissociated. They don't even know that they're burnt out. Um, they're just tooling along going, hey, this is normal. This is the new yeah. normal. You yeah. know, I beat myself to death. I eat my lunch at, at, at uh, my desk without ever moving at all. Yeah. Um, and this is supposed to be okay. I think that a lot of people don't even know. And so why don't you just give us a quick one as we're wrapping up here. Uh, help people out there with three things that are for sure signs of burnout. Sure. Well, uh, I think you just named one. If you never take a break at work and you work through breaks and you work through lunch and you eat at your desk while you're working that's a sign of burnout um if you can't shut off the to-do list in your head uh ever that's a sign of burnout if you um you know also as you said i think another sign of of being inured to being chronically burned out is that you don't expect that there can be anything different um, so you just accept that, yeah, you know, I have to work long hours and I have to log in at night and I have to be accessible exactly. on my cell phone. And, and that becomes the new normal. Pushing back, and we can push exactly. back and we can advocate for ourselves, but too many of us have given up on it, I think. I love it. Your your points are absolutely so well said and, and articulated. All right, so we've been talking about, yeah, you could be happy but still be burned out. Our guest is Dr. Scott Beeson, and you've got to run out there and get that book, The Working Dad Survival Guide, How to Succeed at Work and at Home. And his website is Scott Beeson, and that's B as in boy, E-H. SON.com to learn more about his wonderful work. Dr. Beeson, thank you for being on her radio. I'm Dr. Pam Peek with Michelle King Robeson. To avoid burnout, ladies, do the following three, three things take a break, shut off the to do list in your head, and expect to do things differently. You're listening to her radio on Radio MD. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Stay well.